P-47 flying over. And for those seeing it over in my end, you can see the yeah, little Yeah, for once head. not slamming into the ground. Damn rookie pilots. Ay, 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 ay. Well, this is one of those replays so, that makes you go, uh... Yeah, huh, but not in a good way. So what do you think about this, uh, the general tactics and that sort of thing that they were using? I think uh, the Axis pr did pretty well in the early game. Kind of got into a lot of trouble once those Calliopes were out. They didn't deal with them, they just kind of tried to stay away. Uh, and that unfortunately got their King Tiger destroyed, which if they'd gone in immediately and gone after them with the King Tiger and every piece of armor they had, they probably would have come out uh, ahead. Well, it just shows that there is certainly a lack of coordination between the three players. Um, team games like this require a lot of communication. I would say voice calming is a must. And uh, it certainly didn't help that you have two defensive doctrines and not enough heavy axis armor because as powerful as the King Tiger is by itself with only the light support of tanks and infantry just getting obliterated by freaking Calliope barrages and not enough heavy tanks you, you know you can see where this is going I can see precisely where it's going in the burned out wreck just north of the <laughs> center VP Yes, yeah, with a little wrench over it. <laughs> yeah, I don't think that one's going to be getting up and going anytime soon. So, uh, well, it was actually kind of interesting. Um, I was watching a game earlier, uh, and I was reviewing a game earlier today with Zero Crack versus, I think it was General KJ. And uh, Zero Crack decided to go for armor. I, I think they were trying to see just how armor would stack up in the game. And in the end, it, it didn't really turn out very well for a Zero Crack. He was able to bring out a Calliope. He did get his tanks out a little bit quicker, but then against the superior veterancy of the Axis armor, he pretty much just got destroyed. Over in this game, we've got two armor companies and an airborne. And, uh, well, four Calliopes are a hell of a lot better than one. Yeah, quite. I mean... And they noticed, you noticed they timed their barrages too. They didn't just waste it all on one barrage, they barraged consecutively, which really kept the pressure up on the Axis line, forcing them to fall back. And Definitely, that's uh, a sign of good coordination and communication there. They, must, they might have been speaking together in some form of voice communication program, though it appeared some of them were just relying on typing. Uh, towards the end of the game, they were pretty much just <laughs> double firing them, but uh, they could afford to do that. Yeah, and just. It's hard for me to say, was defensive worth it? Because that 88, considering how much arty that can be brought to bear, is just. Ugh, it's brutal in team games. Someone's gonna go arty, arty the crap out of the 88, and then the 88 basically becomes a expensive piece of junk. Either that or somebody else's new toy. Um, ah, it's hard to say. Defensive can be played very well. I mean, you've got the most powerful off-map call-in artillery in that tree, in the 280mm rocket barrage. It's it's only really second to the V1, and it does a hell of a lot of damage. It just costs a hell of a, a lot. But using registered artillery on a consistent basis, if you're attacking forward, capping territory, then retreating back, letting them cap the territory, get hit by the rocket barrage, and then attack forward again, if you can coordinate it properly, uh, I think defensive can be a great asset. I just don't know if you've got enough pushing power and in this case, it, it definitely look, looks like it's not. Uh, if you're going too terror or uh, too defensive on a uh, 3v3 map like this, yeah, Blitz Craig definitely was needed here. We needed the regular Tigers and the other heavy troops that the Germans had. 
would have been nice to see all three doctrines working together or you know some variation thereof yeah even a pair of super tanks would have been better than uh, what happened in the situation unfortunately but I think you're right though blitz would have been the best choice uh, would have been better to have a mix of all three for the sole saving grace in this case if you'd have stormtroopers with double panzer shreks or double mp44s that you could use to sneak up on all these calliopes toss a, a bundled nade on them finish them off with uh, panzer shreks or just spot for the v1 exactly well and also what can you say it's like it's not often that we get to do a thousand vp replay and we get to see the result of what happens when you play with a thousand vps <laughs> uh. you get a long game that's what you get a long game and if you are the losing team a long waiting period of getting raped well if you think about it uh, if this game had been a little bit more evenly matched there's still almost 600 BPs for the allies that uh, that could have been another <laughs> 20 25 minutes in the game not counting neutral times but I think we're gonna have to call this one. I think we've analyzed as much as we can. Definitely recommend more diverse access units would have been nice. More units that are more, more aggressive. Even a second kick time would have helped. Uh, what did you see in the ally play that could have been worked on? Or did they do everything just excellent? I wouldn't say they did everything excellently. There were uh, mistakes here and there. Uh, a couple of cases of units charging in, unsupported, that sort of thing. Uh, you'd have player one with this force and player two with that force, and the first player would send his force in and it would start attacking, and then the second player would just kind of be sitting there with his force for a little while longer. There was, uh, there, sorry, there were a few good uh, good good examples of teamwork there particularly when that uh, Pershing on the left hand side was being followed by those two Shermans and it ran into those Axis tanks that was uh, that was good to see a nice concentration of force overall I, I think they've got a good idea with this two armor and airborne company strategy infantry company might have given them a few extras here or there they would have had some off-map artillery, maybe some on-map artillery, some off-map combat groups, that sort of thing. But uh, I think overall they, they did okay. Most of the problems were just your standard small micro or a couple of small macro problems. And of course communication. So they may not have been working together too closely, but they seem to have the general, uh, they seem to be sharing the general idea basically. Yeah, well and with that, we're going to have to call this one a good game, I guess, even though, well, what a mess. Uh, this is Hellfox. Can't wait for the rematch. <laughs> if there is a rematch. Uh, well, this is Hellfox, and from all of us here at GameReplace.org, have a good night. Good night.